Pardon me. Oui, monsieur? Are you Lobino? Oh, no. Fancy you mistaking me for him. No. I am the deputy custodian. But Lobino does work here. Work? I wouldn't go so far as to call it that he studies here most days, but as you can see for yourself, not today. Do you know anything about the Knights of the Temple? No, sir. Not a sausage. Do you know anything about medieval manuscripts? Not me, monsieur. I am no scholar. Though people often mistake me for one. It is the uniform, I guess. They see the clothes. They are impressed. And they ask you to park their cars? They ask me to park the... No, no, no. They assume I am an authority on the exhibits in my care. Whereas you know next to nothing about history. Of course not. All I am saying is, I am no scholar. Not like Monsieur Lobino. What do you make of this tissue? It is absolutely disgusting, Monsieur. What does this tool mean to you? That belongs in a museum. Pardon? It is a priceless historical artifact, if I am not mistaken. No, it's a plain old tool for lifting drain covers. Thanks for your help. In the case was a spindly tripod, blackened with age and pitted with rust. It was identical to the tripod pictured on the manuscript. A notice identified it as 15th century from Western Ireland. It had been found in Loch Marne at the site of a Knights Templar preceptory. Ireland! What's that? This tripod was found in Ireland. I will have to ask you to keep your voice down. I'm sorry, I was excited. Leave it alone. That closet is over 3,000 years old. Closet? It's a sarcophagus. As I reached toward the display case, a shrill piping filled the air. I froze then tried to get myself together and act nonchalantly. No, monsieur. No, eh, no. Okay, okay. What's the importance of John Dee's tripod? Dee was the most famous escapologist of the 16th century. The Udini of his time. Don't you mean alchemist? Escapologists use ropes, chains, and handcuffs, not tripods. Well, whatever he was, that is the tripod he used in his experiments. What kind of experiments did John Dee perform with his tripod? Oh, the usual. Didn't you study chemistry at school? Yeah, but we skipped over thaumatology. Can I take a closer look at the tripod? What? Get it out of the case? Ah, uh, no! That tripod is protected by a sophisticated surveillance system. How sophisticated? A painfully loud alarm bell. How is the alarm bell triggered? By the slightest pressure on or movement of any part of the case wherein that tripod is situated. It strikes me that to call your alarm system sophisticated is, well, stretching the truth a little. It has never failed yet. The sophistication is in its simplicity. Right on the tripod says it was found at a Templar preceptory. It does? Yeah. It doesn't mention John D. at all. Most remiss. You don't know anything about the tripod, do you? No, I don't. I never had much of a start in life, you see. I owe what little education I gained to my uncle. He was an optician, but he also doubled as the village school teacher. He taught me the alphabet. Wait, 19 letters of it. The bottom row of the chart was too small even for him to read. So he left them out. Why don't you start over and enroll for adult education? You know, I never thought of that. Do you think, if I studied art and did all my homework, I could be a professor of history? At your age? Dream on. This is ridiculous. I could be here for hours.
Attention! Please do not open the window, monsieur. Don't you think it's kind of stuffy in here? Better stuffy than dead. What's the problem? Fumes from car exhausts? Not just that, monsieur. There's a new burger bar opened up across the street. The Laughing Buffalo. So what's the problem? They cook their burgers on a shackle grill. And the fat falls on the open flame. The amount of organic compound and smoke particles released is astounding. Since they opened, local air pollution has doubled. And it stinks like a funeral pyre. That is why I keep the windows closed. Hi. I've been to the Croon Museum. Did you speak to Labino? No, he wasn't there. I found the tripod. Where? In the museum. It belonged to the Templars. It was dug up in Ireland at a place called Loch Marne. I have heard of Loch Marne. I read an article about the castle. Take a look for yourself. A popular gossip magazine? You read that rubbish? No, I write it. Professor Nigel Pegram excavating the medieval castle at Loch Marne. That's strange. What? He resigned his chair at Durham University in order to devote his time to the excavation. Not only that, but he canceled the filming of a fourth series of his popular television program. This site at Loch Marne must be awful important to him. He's a professor of history, Daryl Cuckoo. All the same, I'd like to talk to this Professor Pegram. How do you feel about a trip to Ireland? Disappointed. Huh? That I won't be going. I want to follow up the Belota case. If you really think Pikram's gem is important, why don't you visit Lochman? On my own? I'm not so sure about that. Where is Ireland exactly? Have you found out any more about the murders? Well, it may be nothing, but both the clan's victims visited Paris earlier this year. When? The second week of July. They were both here at the same time. Did they meet? I don't know. But I can't imagine it was coincidence. I have to go. Okay, I'll see you later. I passed the castle on the way into Loch Marne, the castle where Pegram's excavation was located. I tugged at the trapdoor, but it was locked from the inside. I tugged at the plastic cover, but it didn't move. Hi there! What? What's your name, kid? Who are you calling, kid? Who the hell are you? Rosso's the name. Murder's my game. Are you a detective? Let's just say I'm here to find the truth. Cool. Just like on the telly. Cut the crap and tell me your name. Liam McGuire. What are you doing hanging around the bar, McGuire? I'm on the run. From me dad. Why? Did you do something bad? I ain't done nothing, boss. You can tell me, kid. Is it your dad? Oh, sir. He drinks. Every last penny. Down his evil throat. And there's me poor old mother, bedridden and dying of presumption. I tried to buy her medicine. Chopped firewood for father Mahoney till me fingers bled. The old skin flint cheated me too. But I took the pennies he gave me back home. Look, ma, says I, see what your darling son has earned with his own sweat and blood. When suddenly, me dad appears and grabs the loot. I'm off to Dublin, heavy drinking, says he. Watch out till I get back. That's why I runned away. Something in the grin on his face told me he wasn't being strictly truthful. Compared to him, Huckleberry Finn was a candidate for altar boy of the year. Do you know a man called Pegram? Can you describe him like on the telly in the cop shows? He's an English archaeologist. I know the man you mean if he's the one. Have you seen a guy dressed as a clown? Here in Loch Marne? They all dress like clowns. The man I'm looking for is a dangerous psychotic. Jesus. It's just like that film I saw. 
there's this clown, see, and he's after this kid who saw him kill a guy. He tries to warn the sheriff, only no one believes him. Then, while he's in the tub, the clown cuts him up with a chainsaw. My God, that doesn't sound suitable for a kid like you. Who are you calling a kid? I'm 25. Yeah, right. You're not a day over 14. Oh no, it's 25 that I am. Married with a car and three kids. Ten kids if you count the wives. What can you tell me about the castle, McGuire? What do you want to know? Well, can I get inside? No, it's locked up. Does anyone live there? No. You know something about the castle you're not telling me, don't you? No. What is it you're covering up? Is it something you're scared of? I ain't scared of nothing. Have you ever seen anyone wearing one of these? Sure. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. That belongs to the killer clown you're looking for. That's right. Can I have it? Sorry. I'm keeping this as evidence. You should have told the cops. I did. They weren't interested. You should run tests on that, mister. You could identify the murderer with a sample of his snot. Yuck. I don't think so. What do you think this tool is used for? Lifting drains. Dead right. How did you know that? Work experience course at school. It gives me a choice of going down the drains or up the chimney. You're kidding. I'll give you one last chance to tell me about the castle. Oh yeah? And what if I don't? Then I'm taking you back to school. Oh, there's a ghost. It's called the Phantom Alochman. You're not telling me you believe in ghosts, are you? Mister, I seen it with me very own eyes. Last Tuesday night, I went up to see what that dig was about. I just reached the top of the wall when I hears this awful noise. What sort of noise? A horrible snuffling and snorting, like O'Brien's pig, only worst. It was coming from inside the castle. Did you find out what was making the noise in the castle? No fear. I just sat there on the wall like Humpty Dumpty. The moon was cracked and greasy like an old dinner plate. The yard was full of shadows that could have been hiding anything. I would have gone home, but me legs had lost their stuffing. Did you get to see the ghost? Indeed I did. And a fearsome sight it is too. I sat on me ass, waited while the moon went down. Then out it comes from the shadows, all grey and tattered and hunched over like an old bent willow. Then I hears this spluttering and splashing and horrible laughter in the dark. I was so scared. Why, I fell off the bloody wall. I'm sure there's a rational explanation for what you saw at the castle. There is. The bloody place is haunted. Can you tell me where I'd find Pegram? No, I can't, because he's not here now. But if I seize him, I'll ask him. Do you know what Pegram was doing in the castle? Digging for buried treasure. Jewels and gold and skeletons, like in the films. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. Top of the morning to you. I beg your pardon? Well, that's what you Irish say, isn't it? Do you want something? Or are you just flaunting your xenophobia? Well, I, I was trying to be sociable. Hm. Is it a room you're after? It's not a bad idea. Do you have a vacancy? I could. But you don't mind waiting until the last guest checks out? No problem. When will that be? When the undertaker comes to collect him. I'll try a glass of beer, please. Is this your first pint of real ale? Uh, well, I guess so. What's real ale, anyhow? Beer that's brewed from natural ingredients to traditional methods. It shouldn't be kept under pressure or refrigerated. And finally, it should have a good body and distinctive character. In other words, it's flat and warm with bits in, and it makes you fall over. Do you know a man called Pegram? Indeed I do. Are you a friend of his, by any chance? Oh no, I'm just trying to track him down. Me too. That son of a bitch should be locked away. Did Pegram stay here? Yes, he did. Six nights plus breakfast. Have you served any, uh, 
clowns recently? No. You're the force today. Does this tissue mean anything to you? That's disgusting. Uh-huh. I found it in the sewers. Well, what's the idea of waving it around in my face? You're worse than old Ron. Put it away, man. Do you recognize this man? No, I don't. What do you want with him? I've got a score to settle. I don't want any trouble in the bar, mister. If it's a fight you're looking for, see Father Mahoney. A priest? A man of the cloth? Sure. And he teaches the boys how to box at the youth club. According to Mahoney, it develops character. Isn't that right, Pat? Didn't he teach you all the art of pugilism? Doyle. Sorry, Michael. I was miles away. What did you say? Ah, never mind. My name's George. Pleased to meet you, mister. My name's Fitzgerald. Can I get you another drink? Oh, no, thank you. I, I shouldn't be drinking at all. I'm on tablets of my nerves. More than a pint and I'll pass out. No. Do you know Professor Pegram? No. He's the archaeologist, isn't he? That's right. What can you tell me about the castle? There's nothing there. Just an old ruin. How old? I really couldn't tell you. Have you ever explored the castle yourself? I used to play there sometimes, when I was a kid. Then one of the little ones fell off the wall, broke his head and died. We didn't go there anymore. You haven't been up there recently? No. Did you work at Professor Pegram's dig? <laughs> what gave you that idea? What do you think this tool is used for? Uh, something to do with horses? Wrong. It's for opening manhole covers. Oh, really? Well, you learn something every day. What does this red nose suggest to you? Blood. Why is that? I used to bleed a lot when I was a kid. Every time there was a playground scrap, I'd end up with a bloody nose. I wouldn't have minded, but I wasn't even involved in the scraps. Check out this pass. Thomas Merlin? No, never heard of him. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I'm sure I don't know him. See you later. Hi, my name's Stobart, George Stobart. Hello there, mister. What can I do for you? Can you tell me anything about the castle on the hill? Oh, I don't know much about anything. You should ask Mr. O'Brien here. He just joined up writing. Would you be one of them history fellows yourself? That's right. Professor Stobart, Miskatonic University. You're an archaeologist, and you're asking us about the castle. Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien. The gentleman was talking to me. How come you didn't leave with the others? I didn't know they'd gone. Oh, yes. Packed their spades and shovels, and away they went. Seems I missed all the excitement. What excitement? Do you know Professor Pegram? Do I know him? Do I know the good professor himself? No, I don't. I mean, I know who he is, but I don't know him to talk to. Do you know anything about Pegram's excavation? Only that he didn't have the right tools for the job. What he needed was shovels and a JCB. Pegram was digging for historical remains, not coal. Is that a fact? What the hell for? Here's the science of archaeology, Pat. Understanding how people used to live by what they've left behind. One day archaeologists might be digging up our remains. Imagine that, Mr. O'Brien. I wonder what they'll find. Well, it won't be arrowheads and beakers. Fast food cartons and flavored condoms, more likely. Did anyone from the village work at Pegram's dig? I tried it myself, but that high and mighty history man called me incontinent. What a nerve. Hadn't I dug more holes than the rest of them put together? Do you remember seeing Sean Fitzgerald at the dig? Hmm. Let me see now. I think me brain box needs a spot of lubrication. Can I buy you a drink? You most certainly can. Give me a drink for my friend here. Who? Doyle? Has he conned you into buying for him? Shame on you, Patrick. Same again. Just a point this time, Michael. One point of brown coming up. Do you remember Sean Fitzgerald now? I can picture the scene as if it was only last week. Come to think of it, it was only last week. Fitzgerald was there all right. Him and a bunch of students. He was speaking with the boss man. What do you make of this tool? It's for lifting manhole covers. Does this security pass mean anything to you? Uh. 
Well, no. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? It's a handsome mug on that fella, to be sure. Is he a film star? Bye for now. Hello there. Uh, my name's George Stobart. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Hey, O'Brien. Uh, can I help you? What can you tell me about the castle, Mr. O'Brien? It's a fine sight now, isn't it? Dates back to the 10th century, you know. Most of the existing building was added much later, of course. Are the ruins open to the public? Oh no, it's much too dangerous. Anyway, there's nothing of interest remaining. How can I get into the castle? Well, those wards were built specifically to stop people getting in, Mr. Stobart. But I dare say you'll find a way, if you've the will. Have you ever heard of the Knights Templar? I most certainly have. A remarkable institution. Did you know? They were the originators of our system of credit. Their financial empire stretched from the Atlantic to the Caspian Sea. With bases in so many countries, they had to establish new methods of fiscal transfer. So, the Knights Templar were nothing but a bunch of bankers. I don't get it. Are you saying these Templar guys invented bank charges? In a matter of speaking, I suppose they did. What a dirty trick. Didn't anyone try to stop them? Oh, yes. They were arrested, and many were burnt at the stake. Good. They bloody well deserved it, if they were anything like my bank manager. Can you tell me about the tripod which was found in the castle? Now, there's a bone of contention and controversy. It was dug up by an Englishman of the archaeological persuasion. Who was this Englishman? Professor Pegram. The same man who dug up the gem. Do you know where I can find Pegram? You're too late to meet that fella. Is he dead? Not that. But he's gone from the village. A saw point with our esteemed host, I might add. Do you know where Pegram has gone? I'm sorry, but I don't. He hoped anchor in the dark and shipped out before the dawn. Why did he do that? Who knows? A guilty conscience or a secret assignation. Whatever the reason, he'll not be missed in Lachmar. Maybe now the fuss about the gem has died dark. We can get back to normal. What can you tell me about the gem which Pegram found? Now there's a gem which should never have been taken. A man would have to be full of greed to covet that stone. What's your interest in the jewel? You're not a reporter, are you? Oh no. Thank the Lord for that. Have you heard of the Phantom? More than that. I've seen it. And let me tell you, it's a dreadful spectacle. So it's not just a local legend. There really is a Phantom of Loch Marne. Oh no. I was talking about the Phantom of the Opera. Do you know Sean Fitzgerald? Yes, I do. What do you want with him? I want to talk to him about working at the dig. I can't imagine anyone implying Sean Fitzgerald on a dig. He wouldn't know a post hole from his elbow. Why is Pegram's departure upset the landlord? He's lost a paying guest, that's why. More than that, there's the question of an unsettled bid. Poor Michael's seen red over the business, and I don't blame him. Can you tell me more about the landlord? Mick Leary? He's what you call a, a would-be sophisticate. The trouble is, his idea of sophistication extends as far as putting paper in the lavatory. I never worked out why he did that. It's much too dark in there to read. That's true. Have you ever run your hand over the back of the door? The graffiti is written in braille. What can you tell me about this ID pass? Gruber Electronics. I've never heard of it. What do you make of this tissue? Oh, I guess that muck on it is grease paint. Does this tool mean anything to you? I'd say it was for lifting manhole covers. Goodbye for now. Hi there, old timer. What? Nasty cold you've got there. As soon as the words left my lips, I regretted them. Is there such a thing as a cold which isn't nasty? I put the question to Father Mahoney. Father, says I, why were we born to suffer snot? What did he say? He said, it's my reward for being out all night like a sinner, pious prig. Anyway, this is no ordinary cold. It is the hay fever. Polynosis? Thank you. You're not a policeman, are you? Excuse me? Police? No. I'd know it if you were. Can you tell me how to get into the castle? Don't even think about it, me bucko. Doc Barn Castle is haunted. That's what the kid outside told me, but I don't believe it. Then you're a fool. Ghosts don't bother me. 
I still want to visit that castle. You can't. It's not open to the public. There's no one around to stop me, is there? That's right. Nothing human, anyhow. You know Pegram, the archaeologist? That's the scrawny fellow who was poking around at the castle, isn't it? No, I don't know him. Have you ever seen the ghost? To be sure. With me very own eyes. Can you describe the ghost? It was horrible. A wee stunted beast. Long beak. Straggly, flappy wings. Are you sure it wasn't a wild animal? A rabbit or a skunk or something? Skunk? In Loch Barn? That'll be the day. No, that was a ghost, to be sure. I think I know what you saw on the castle wall. I know what I saw. I don't think so. It was the kid, McGuire. What? He was up on the wall last Tuesday night. He thought you were the Phantom of Loch Mar. Oh! What's that you're making? It's a necklace, me poco. Oh, sure. Made out of steel wire? <laughs> That's right. A necklace for my pretty one. When my little lover feels it round her slender neck, she'll be mine. All mine. <laughs> Can I buy you a beer? Very kind, I'm sure. But I don't drink the stuff Leary sells. What's wrong with it? I've seen what it can do. You could make use of this tissue. Never use them. Those things are unhygienic. I'll see you later. It was a beer-stained piece of toweling. Hey, McGuire. What? Do you know anything about Pegram's Dig? He wouldn't let me anywhere near it. I offered to help, but he chased me off. I didn't want to see his smelly old hole anyhow. Anyone from the village work at the dig? Pegram bought some students and bums with him. He reckoned no one in Loch Man would know what to look for. The only local guy who worked for him was Sean Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald says he's never been anywhere near the dig. He's having you on, mister. What do you make of this, kid? Hey, that's one of Leary's towels. He'll skin you alive. That old windbag doesn't scare me. Anyhow, I'm only borrowing it. You're pretty cool, mister. For an old guy. What do you think this wire could be used for? Stealing cars. There's only one problem. The local policeman? No. Nobody in Loch Marn has got a car. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. Mr. Fitzgerald? Doyle told me you definitely worked at the dig. He's seen you there. You might as well admit it. I knew this would happen. I knew I'd get caught. I need to talk to Professor Pegram, if he's still alive. What do you mean? Is he in danger? Yeah. You too, if I'm right. You're not from the Social Security. Hell no. What makes you think that? Well, uh, I was claiming benefit at the same time I was working for Pegram. I'm not in a position to make judgments, Sean. That's between you and your conscience. All I want is to talk to Pegram about the gem. But he's not here! I know that. But he left that package with you, didn't he? So where did Pegram go? I don't know. I swear it. He came to see me early this morning. Said he was leaving. He asked me to give this package to a guy called Marque. Show me what's in the package, Sean. I, I can't do that. Why not? I promised the professor. So what? You didn't have any qualms about your benefit scam. So where's the harm in taking a peek inside Pegram's package? You don't know these people. I can't. I don't dare. This is your last chance to show me the package, Fitzgerald. I've been patient with you, but now it's time to kick ass. But he'll kill me. Who will? The man from Paris. Jack Marquet. Pegram told me if I gave him the package unopened, I'd hear no more about it. But if I double-crossed Marquet, I'd be dead. I'll deal with Jacques. Marquet. Give the package to me. No. Why should I trust you? I don't know who to trust anymore. I wish I'd never even heard of the Lockmarn gem. Hey! I just seen a big red! Get out of here, Maguire! 
Come back when you're old enough. What's the lad howling about? A big red sports car. Sean Fitzgerald's been run over. Get out! Noisy little tyke. Maybe you should send out some medicinal brandy maker. Oh yes. And who's going to pay for it? Not me. Me too, neither. I was telling the truth about Fitzy, mister. Okay, okay, calm down. Now tell me what happened. I was standing here, minding me own business, when I saw this beautiful red sports car coming up over the hill. What you look at that, says I. And I going over to take a closer look. Next thing, Fitzy comes tearing out of the pub and nearly knocks me on the ass. But the car just flies at him. It was too fast for poor old Fitzy. And hit him an awful wallop. He goes flying up on top. Jesus, says I. I thought he was a goner. Next thing, the driver hops out. And I couldn't believe my eyes. He was dressed like a bloody pixie, 